Hey everyone, I'm Jessica with Pencil First Games and I'm so excited to show you how to play Sunrise at the Studio. So let's dive right in and see how everything works. Each player will have their own personal area and that's what this looks like here. We're gonna go into what all of these components mean and what you're working on, but just to give you a quick overview here, this is what your own play area will look like in front of you as you're working on your pieces of pottery. There will also be a shared community area that everybody is going to be using and looking at. Again, we will go through what all of these components are and what you're working on, but just to give you an idea before we put everything together, this is the community area that is shared between everybody. In Sunrise at the Studio, you're going to be creating these beautiful pieces of pottery while you spend your day in the studio. So the goal is to score the most points after three days. I have this all set up right now, so we're gonna go through what all these components are, a brief overview of how gameplay works, and then a couple of sample turns just to see how it all flows together. So up here are the day cards. So we are on day one. As I said, you'll play through just three days, and during each day there's gonna be three rounds. The main focus as you're going through this is working on these projects. So I have this set up with three players right now. Everybody will start with a starting project, and all of these projects are really pretty pieces of pottery. You'll see this as an S, so there's starting projects, and they all have different resources that they require in order to complete them. So you're gonna be working on them with different types of clay and glaze, and specifically kilns. So this one is a nice little mug. <laughs> there's also different types that you'll see here for the projects. There's mugs, there's plates, vases, lots of different things you can work on here. And you're gonna see that they are worth points and some of them will have a coffee bean, which I will get to in a second. So you are gonna be working on these projects, mostly getting points from there, although there's a couple other ways that you will pick up bonuses along the way. When you're working on these projects though, you're gonna be converting resource cards. So there's gonna be all different types of resources that you will see. And these are gonna turn into resource cubes, which are really nice. We have nice little ones that are not just regular cubes, <laughs> but they look like little boxes. They've got a line on the top to make it look like it's a box that could contain anything. So when you convert that, you'll either put it onto a project and start marking off your progress, or it can go into your reserve where you'll be able to use those as wild resources later on, sort of convert them into something else. So let's say that you get everything on here. This one requires three resources. You would go like that. And the cool thing here is that all of these will flip over. So once I've completed that, it flips to the other side and it's really, really nice. Look at that. <laughs> So you've got a nice banner at the bottom to remind you of what that project is. And you would move that to the other side of your player mat to indicate it's completed and that it is there and ready for end game bonuses. So what in the world are you doing and why do you choose these projects? Well, there are gonna be shared studio challenges that are out here. So these are things that everyone is racing to complete first because the first person to complete it will get more points and then everyone else could complete it here. Um, but there's a nice little race there to try to get these first. There's always three out in play. This one, for instance, is looking for three different projects that have three different clay types. And there are other ones and you'll get a different assortment each time you play. I mentioned coffee beans before, which will be on a couple of different components. There's actually one right here. This project, if you complete it, will reward a coffee bean. For instance, if I flip that over, there's a nice reminder. That's worth a coffee bean. And if you know Pencil First Games games, <laughs> we always have that special card that's worth extra points. So whoever gets the most coffee beans will earn the cup of coffee at the end of the game, and that's worth an extra three points. So that can be super important. Now, you might see all these other components out here too. These tiles, the small ones, they're really nice. Those ones are there to mark off studio challenges as you complete those. So if you are lucky, you will get one on each card as you can only complete a studio challenge once during the course of play. 
These larger ones are actually done in the really cool element here of how you have to choose a work style every day. So I have all the resource cards over here. Just as a note, they are, they have nice little icons on there for how many players you have. This is for two players. You'd mix in the three player ones here or four. So I'm gonna throw the four ones back in the box. We would have all of these. But the idea here with the resource cards is that you actually don't have the same starting hand as everyone. You're gonna have different cards and you don't know exactly what you're gonna have. So we would start off with all these resource cards, give them a good shuffle, and everybody is gonna get 12 cards. I'm just gonna give them to myself. <laughs> Pretend everyone else has them over here. But this would be my deck, which I wouldn't be able to look at. And at the start of a round, I would take those and I would draw. Normally they go below, I'm a little off camera here, <laughs> but normally you would store these, you would kind of have a little bit more space. They would go underneath your player mat right here, right in front of you. So I do have these in front of me just a little bit off over here so we can enjoy everything here. But you would draw the top four cards and everyone does this simultaneously. So there's a lot of uh, play that happens where you're not waiting for other players to take their turns. So everyone would draw their first four cards, take a look at the resources that you have, and then the cool part here is you actually have to choose a work style to use. So you're not gonna be able to keep all these cards and there's a lot of cool decisions. So keep that in mind, you've got four cards and you have three work styles on your player mat that you are reminded of. And these are efficient, measured, and wasteful. And what that is, is you get to choose what you wanna do with the cards. So you're gonna be able to keep some, but then you have to pass some potentially to your opponents or even discard some to the waste basket. So the other neat thing here though, is that each day you are going to use each work style once and one time only. So for instance, if I decide during my first turn, I wanna play with the efficient work, work style, I will keep three cards and pass one to the player on my left. And then I would use this to mark that off. And for the rest of day one, I can't use that work style. I have to then choose between these two. So you can kind of see there's some cool strategies there of figuring out, do I take the risk right now? Do I want to use these resources? Or are these resources maybe not good for my opponent? Maybe I should pass them along. <laughs> But that's what you would do. So for instance, if I, this, let's say this was my turn, um, just considering looking at the project that I have right now, um, I would probably want to use, yeah, I, I would be efficient. I would go for it. <laughs> and actually, so what I would do is with my four resource cards, I would want to pick the efficient method, which is that first one where I am going to keep three and pass one to the player on my left. So these are gonna be passed face down. So I would pass this one, put it on the potter's wheel right over here, and then these I would keep. Meanwhile, my opponents would be deciding what to do with their cards, and I have no idea, but perhaps I might end up with one over here. There might be some that get discarded to the waste basket. And then once everybody has gone, and let's say that they have, I don't know if this is on camera, but they will mark off whatever work style they used. Then take a look at your cards on your potter wheel, your potter's wheel, and decide how you want to use those resources. So, oh, that's lucky. A wild resource. So for instance, this one, this is a light glaze that I can't actually use. I don't have a project that it will go with, but I can still use this. So what I would do with that is I would, it's going over to the waste basket, but I would turn that into a cube to put in my reserve. And there's a little reminder there that every two resources in your reserve can turn into a wild. So it's basically the equivalent of that card, which can be pretty neat. Uh, then this is a double resource card. So I do need stone. So I'll use one of those to fill in this one and then that other one I can put into my reserve. This is an either or and I definitely need that dark glaze. So we would fill that in over here. And then this wild resource is perfect because I need that for a kiln and I would go over here. So everybody would be doing that at the same time. 
Uh, they would, you know, probably have a few on here. We'll say this one got lucky and completed everything there. <laughs> so when you complete a project, you have to announce it and say, I completed a project. So if this was the case, then it would be me and the orange player over here completed a project. We now evaluate and see who is going to complete them first. So whereas everything was simultaneous before, this happens in project order. So every card has an initiative value on it. I have the one and they have the three. So lowest one goes first. So I would get to go first. So we would take those resources off. I get to do that cool flip. And now I have a completed mug over here. I would also be checking for studio challenges here, but obviously these require at least two projects. Uh, that one's two, these are three. So didn't get that yet. But now I get to choose a completion bonus action. When you complete a project, you get to do something else. This is how you get more projects or potentially some advantage cards. So let me grab a player mat that doesn't have stuff on it. <laughs> But your completion bonus actions you get to choose, you are either going to draw two project cards. You can see there's a row of four out here. I can take one project card and one advantage card, or I can draw three advantage cards and keep one. The only thing to keep in mind though is that you must always have an in-progress project. So right now, I need to work on something. <laughs> So I either have to take two projects or I need to take a project and an advantage card. In the interest of showing off everything in here, I'm going to take one project and an advantage card. So if I take that advantage card, there are a bunch of different ones in here. This is actually a personal goal. So I would keep this hidden um, until I choose to reveal it. I can also always discard an advantage card that I have not yet revealed to put a resource into my reserve. So you got a bunch of options here, but what this one is, this is a personal goal. So if I complete those three different project types by the end of the game, I get an additional two points. And this would be, you know, I don't have to reveal it yet. I don't even have to decide I wanna go for that yet. So fun stuff there. Uh, but let me just show you what else is in that advantage deck. So there are also going to be these cool show pieces. A show piece is not a project, so there's a bunch of exceptions. It's not going to be used for studio challenges. It would not work with completing these personal goals. And a few other instances, you don't get completion bonus actions for this, but they usually require just a few resources and have a pretty good point value up there. So you could start working on this show piece if you wanted to. There's show pieces in there. What else? That's right. There are coffee beans in here. So you might accumulate more coffee beans in order to earn that cup of coffee. That's a cool one. I know there's more. <laughs> this is a unique one in that you actually get to go first when completing a project and you get a resource in your reserve. So this lets you actually cut ahead in the project order as I was just talking about how I went first because I had number one. Um, so that lets you do that and what else is in here? And then there's also, you get two resources immediately to put into your reserve. That is how you are gonna progress then. So that would be me. I would have drawn my, res or my, sorry, my advantage card. We'll say I picked up that, keep that hidden. And then I get to choose a project. So I would evaluate the studio challenges and see what I wanted to work on. Um, and then take one from there. Also coffee beans are always great. So we could say I picked up this one. Meanwhile, I would then be finished with that. This player would then get to complete their project. So that flips over, they get it in their completed area. And let's say that they wanted to pick up two projects, they could pick up this one to start working on. You always do refills so that you always have a choice of four projects here. And let's say that they wanted this plate too. So they now have two in progress projects. That would be the first round of day one. We then proceed and go through drawing up, you know, four more resource cards deciding how to use those. And remember, I only have two work styles available. Keep going to the end of the day. So at the end of the day, all of the resource cards are gonna end up in the waste basket. You are gonna have 
your work styles are going to be all marked off on your player mat like that. At that point, clear it off. <laughs> Take all those resource cards from everywhere and you're going to reshuffle those, deal out 12, and then move on to day two. Go through again, day three, and then evaluate everything at the end of the game. And that is it. So it's probably gonna take about 20 minutes to play through, lots of cool decisions, and really just flipping over these projects is so much fun. <laughs> Being able to fill in those requirements and then flip it and just seeing what you created and kind of keeping track of that. You can stack these if you want to, or you can keep them, you know, show off your beautiful creations, but there's so many nice pieces of pottery here. Again, in the Advantage deck, there's show pieces to go through and lots and lots of cool ways to discover the different strategies. So that is how you play Sunrise at the Studio. There's also a separate solo mode, and in the description, you will find a link to see how to play that along with a full playthrough. As always, thanks so much for watching and take care.